We're a couple years deep into a new decade now, and you got a lot of bands looking at their past and doing a variety of things in response to that, in response to the new future ahead. It's full of a lot of throwbacks, it's full of a lot of debuts, and it's full of a lot of familiar sounds. But how many times can you reinvent yourself before it just starts to get muddied? <laughs> Welcome to A Run and Does Music, where today we're talking about the eighth studio album from Atreyu called Baptize. I've loosely followed the band since about 2012 when I first found one of their classic songs, Right Side of the Bed. And while I haven't dedicated hours and hours to their discography, a song like that and other similar songs like stuff off of the Death Grip from yesterday has kept my attention enough to keep them a band that's constantly in my head when conversations about metal come up. And I've also followed them enough to realize that they've had a few ups also about equal downs. This includes the equally controversial and commercially successful Lead Sales Paper Anchor album holding the highest chart positions and arguably the most recognition outside of the core fan base. But also being an album that a lot of people look at like, yeah, what the fuck is that? That's not a Treyu. This album was followed by Congregation of the Damned and Long Live, two albums that saw a more welcome return to sound, closer to their metalcore roots and the stuff that a lot of people grew up on with the band. Then you come to 2018 and you had the album In Our Wake, and uh, there's, no, there's no use repeating what has already been said. Uh, it sucked. It was an album that felt three different shades of phone and an album that offered really nothing, and the best thing to come out of the album was a tour that they did with Memphis Mayfire, Sleep Signals, and Ice Nine Kills. Overall, it was slightly above average, but when you look back at such classic albums like The Curse, or again, A Death Grip on Yesterday, you look at In Our Wake and you think to yourself, Scott, what the f And honestly, I hate saying this, but Baptize has a pretty similar vibe going on here. As it was very evident from the get-go in the second sig single featuring Travis Barker, okay, we're starting to get some positivities. Travis Barker is a god amongst the scene currently in the last few years. But then you realize the song is Warrior, Ooh, oof. The single before it generated a good amount of hype for the eventual album, with Save Us leaning toward more, more towards a commercial sound, but still having a relatively core Atreyu sound. I mean, just the call out of Save Us, followed by the nice whole, like, in, like nice little instrumentation. It was super good, but Warrior was something very fucking different. This is gonna, this is gonna give me a lot of shit. It sounds like something off of a Skilla album. Ironic, because I'm pretty sure that a Skillet review for the newest album, Dominion, is coming out before or after this review. That, that's fucking, that's a little hilarious. It's just another typical radio rock, I'm strong, I'm in control, and I'm resilient song that feels like it's being sung about nothing. It's pointing towards this opposing force, and that's where it stops. You're shouting against the gates, you're pounding on the gates, but it's just random fence in the field. There's nothing on the other side. There's no enemy, there's no opposing force, there's nothing to rise up with your weapons against. You're, just, you're a warrior without a cause here. It's like this is a song without an audience. There's so many empty lines and throwaway lyrics in here. I'll admit, when I first saw Travis Barker on here, I thought it was gonna be an instant classic. I was like, hey, Travis Barker. Again, guy's a fucking legend. But no, he doesn't add any real difference or flair to things. And it's really odd considering that rarely do you ever see this complete lack of recognizability for him within a song. You look at stuff like I'm Not Okay, his stuff with Avril Lavigne, and the other dozens upon dozens of features that has done with pop punk and punk music in the past couple years, and you think to yourself, oh yeah, I can pick this out. That's Travis right there at the minute mark. I can't find him anywhere in this. The same kind of subject matter comes up earlier in the album with the song Broken Again, once again featuring an almost manufactured and company rendition style of the band's sound. And I hate saying this, I hate just constantly shitting on it, especially twice in a row in the introduction and review but again, this just sounds forced and done without any imagination, nuance, or care for the type of storytelling that this band can achieve. When you're as deep into a career as these guys are, fuck, past the 20 year mark in fact, the kind of ideas that you can put into songs can only be repeated so many times, it can only be done well about half of those times. I made a comparison to Skilla, which isn't to say they're a terrible band at all, but they very much do the same thing over and over again. Check out that review of Dominion, by the way. And it starts like, it seems like a tray you is starting to follow that sort of thing where it's like, okay, here's three songs. We're going to talk about rising up, we're going to talk about fighting something, and we're going to talk about how we're stronger than ever. But a tray you, isn't that the same thing three times in a row? Yes, shut the fuck up. You can make that argument for a lot of bands, but I think a Skillet and now a tray, you just these two songs in particular, are, fuck, songs like Warrior, Broken Again, and even Untouchable. A song that includes the talents of Jacoby Shaddix from Papa Roach. Once again, 
he's adding nothing to the track. And I love Jacoby. I, I'll admit some of the more recent songs that he's been releasing, like, uh, I can't even fucking name them. The only good song that feels like it's come out is, uh, what was the song that had the guy look like Austin Knight in the music video? I don't know. Editing Hunter. Put, put, a, put a picture of it up on the screen. That's the one good Papa Roach song, but I'm starting to trail off now. This song has a two word chorus just for being repeated over and over again. And it's hard to make for any band to make that listenable, but when you're an album like Baptized and you got a lot more negative things we're gonna continue talking about, it's even fucking worse. I can't even begin to fathom what the goal was with the song. It's just more of the same. Yeah, I'm on top. I'm a big guy on campus. I can't be stopped. Nobody's stopping you. There's no opposing force. Once again, just like with Warrior, we're now seeing that recycled element here in Untouchable. And I'm repeating myself because their song is a repetition, copy and paste of the other song. <sighs> you might as well just make the chorus go, we're untouchable, we're warriors, unstoppable. We won't be broken and beat down again. Because at that point, at least you're being blatant enough and it's just calling out the same ideas. And it's just as painfully obvious that it's the same thing over and over again, but at least you got more words than just, we're untouchable. There's some positives though, let's sprinkle in some positives here. Hell, the album kicks things off with a positive energy with a nice intro track that blends seamlessly into the second song, the title track, Baptize. The song takes the pacing of the intro and jumps back and forth between that momentum and the more impactful sound that the verses hold with the second song. It's kind of an overdone thing to switch from clean vocals to screaming vocals, literally one line to one line to one line, but it can sound really good when it's done well. And Baptize, the song, does it very well here on the track. And we even get some more cliches with talking about washing away your sins, getting baptized, something that's been done to death over and over again, something that feels very Atreyu, but this is Atreyu leaning on something that they've done before and something that's very cliche and perhaps overdone, but making something enjoyable from it. This track shows that the band knows what they gotta do to produce a banger. It takes its instrumentals and vocals that sound like the band members give a fuck. It sounds like the members aren't just doing what they did in the last album in our wake and just saying like, all right, yeah, we're here in the studio. I'm in the wake of destruction. No, they're actually sitting here and producing some belting vocals, some riff-tastic guitars. That's a fucking word. Some drums that actually make you bob your head along with it and some bass that, again, I always make a point to say this because when it's a, something to point out, I enjoy it so much. Bass that actually has a sound instead of just being a thrum in the background. Boom, 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 boom. That's all it is. It's more than that. The fact that the vocals don't sound like they're ripped from a stereotypical every man's rock band vocal act at some shitty bar in a bad action movie soundtrack makes a track worth punching and kicking to. The first single that I mentioned earlier, Save Us, actually comes in third on the track list and feels like a clickbait song almost in a way with how it communicates almost an entirely different kind of album through itself than what we actually got. Just like Baptize, it balances the more metalcore style vocals with the more recent melodic rock approach that they've been doing ever since, I'd say, Lead, Lead Sales Paper Anchor. You're using the same song structures from past albums, but you're drawing out the clean vocals on display from singer Brand Sailor a little bit more and more. Speaking of singers, this is actually the first album in the band's career without founding member Alex, I'm gonna butcher the last name, Varkatsis. Previously the singer alongside drummer Brandon. This album featured more lineups, which is in fact seeing Seller go from singer, keyboardist, and programmer, and drummer to just singer and keyboard guy. Although that Wikipedia was very confusing, so I could have just said an absolute fucking lie. Please, somebody call me out if that was an absolute fucking lie. In fact, I think I saw that it was the bassist Mark McKnight doing the one who's screaming on this album. And I have to say, if that's who he is, this is a very solid debut. The screams that when they do finally pop up and they pop up in songs like Save Us, or baptize. There are some of the more exceptional moments on deep cuts like Underrated and Fucked Up especially. Now those two songs, holy fuck, they make the case for tracks that can fit into material as early as The Curse. Featuring some real heavy moments and some constant breakdowns towards different specific parts of the songs. Underrated actually has one of the most fiery verses in the second one that flows into a powerful refrain. Here's a refrain in particular, here's the lyrics. We are the kings, we are the kings, get on your knees and bow. We are the kings, we are the kings, we are the rulers now. That type of line, when it's done right, it's given the right kind of singing, and it has the right kind of sound behind it with the instruments and the different members of the band, it's so fucking powerful, I love it. Combine that with the heavy breakdown later on, and this, this, again, it's kind of like Save Us, where it feels like if you showed those two songs from this album to a person, they're gonna sit there and think, oh, Baptize is a banger fucking album, but they're clickbaity in the sense that you hear those and you're like, okay, these are super good, then you hear the actual album and it's like, hey, where, 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 was, where was that at? 
That was there for like two seconds and they left the party. The more melodic of the side of the band can shine super well, especially in a song like this. But while melodies are nice and cool, there's also some choruses that sound perfect to yell at the band from the mosh pit while you get floored for it by some six foot three guy. Such as in the song Fucked Up. If you're gonna listen to one song from this album, whether you've heard the album before or not, just go listen to Fucked Up. Fucked Up is so fucking nice. I honestly don't know what I expected from this album. I mean, of course I wanted to hear an absolutely legendary band from the metalcore scene produce a legendary album. But this is also one of those albums I kind of went in realizing that, yeah, we're probably not getting that after in our wake. We might get a return to form, but we're not going to get quite get something legendary or even on par with some returns such as, I guess in a very similar tone, Under Oath with what they did to Erase Me. I knew that In Our Wake kind of was sort of a slow death sentence for the band in a way, and that death sentence is slowly continuing when you look at the overall pieces that fit into this album. I wanted to hear this band put out something memorable after so many hit or miss albums, whether I personally enjoyed them and the critics didn't, or vice versa. But I guess that was just wishful thinking that ended up sinking. There are shining moments such as the songs I discussed towards the later half of this review, but the meat of this album is left raw undercooked, and settles for just enough to pass the test, being painfully average in comparison to past releases. And it's for that reason, and the reasons I've discussed before, that Baptized by Atreyu gets a 6.3 out of 10. And that's the review. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with the points I made? Do you love Fucked Up? Please tell me you love Fucked Up. This song is so fucking good. Let's get a conversation going. Don't forget, stay hydrated, have a good day. I'll see you next time.